City America that combines sun and surf, tropical weather year-round, and a cultural stew with a Latin flavor, Miami. This weekend, Miami's 24-7 party scene has kicked up a notch as the CART FedEx Champ Cars return to the streets of this Suncoast capital for the first time in seven years. The intensity of the Fiesta is matched by that of the championship. Four men are still standing in the fight for a million-dollar title. Bruno Junquera, Dario Franchitti, Patrick Carpentier, and Cristiano D'Amata. Junquera and D'Amata are Miami homeboys, hoping to give their fans something special to cheer for. But yesterday's first laps on this all-new street circuit offered a crash course in car control, sometimes literally. When first qualifying rolled around, trying to wring the ultimate performance out of these 800 horsepower rockets took every ounce of each driver's skill. And sometimes even that was not enough. When the combination of big horsepower and big downforce became too much, the track was patched and repaved. In a few moments, they'll dance with the devil again. Welcome to sunny South Florida, where the relativity, relative humidity meter is just about pegged. As you just saw, the new circuit for the Grand Prix Americas in downtown Miami is diabolical when it's dry. Well, today, Mother Nature is showing her mean streak, and we have rain into the equation as we get set for final qualifying for round 16 of the CART FedEx Championship Series. Now, back in 1983, when Cuban-American racing promoter Ralph Sanchez brought street racing to his adopted hometown of Miami, that race was shortened to just a handful of laps by a typical South Florida gully washer. But Sanchez paid the full purse, and the racing world beat a path to his door. Now, some two decades later, the champ cars are in town to revive the traditions of street racing in Miami, and we welcome you to the Grand Prix Americas, where, on top of everything else, we have rain as we get set for final qualifying. But the course itself has been a story all weekend long, and for more on that, let's go to the pit lane and Derek Daly. Thank you, Bob, and you said it, a new circuit. Whenever you come to a new circuit, inherently it brings its own unique problems, and we had them here yesterday, particularly at turn four. Now, Martin Saik is the one that has to deal with all these headaches. He is the director of circuit development for CART. Martin, give us an idea of what happened first over there and the measures you had to take to rectify it. Well, Derek, as, as any time we run on a, on a city streets uh, on a surface that was not designed for race cars, uh, we're always going to face unique problems. Uh, we, ha we do have these problems all over the place when we run on streets of different places. And uh, what happened to us yesterday was uh, in the area of the turn three and four here in Miami, uh, the surface started to come up, uh, basically unravels. The, uh, the surface just develops into a larger and larger hole with the hot, uh, hot race tires going over it. During the day, we can address that with a temporary asphalt repair or temporary concrete repair. But uh, in this case, the patches or the damaged areas was getting larger and larger, especially given that we're running three very uh, high load series here this weekend. So what we had to do was last night, we brought in uh, a great deal of construction equipment. We, uh, we dug all kinds of holes. We ended up putting uh, about 1,800 square feet of concrete in at a depth of about six inches through the apexes of turns three, four, and five here in Miami. And then we, uh, we used an asphalt sealer to seal around the new concrete patches. And so far, everything's working really well. Did you get any sleep? I've had about <laughs> seven hours sleep in the past 48. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. OK, Martin, I know it's a bit of a headache. But remember, the cars he talks about, Indy cars or champ cars, can generate in excess of 5,000 pounds of downforce. That is a huge load. But no matter whatever the problems are here, there's a championship to be fought over. With more on that, let's go down the road here to Calvin Fish. Calvin? Double D, even the tricky nature of this racetrack has befuddled none other than championship leader Cristiano D'Amata. He typically dominates on the street and road courses, but after qualifying yesterday, he's down in P6. That's the bad news. The good news, the three guys who can catch him in this championship had an even worse day. When you look at the graphic, Bruno Junquera is currently second in points. He's all the way down in 10th. Dario had a slightly better day. He's currently seventh. Patrick, he has a slim child at this championship. He's all the way down in 17th. So all of these guys need to get 
somehow on track today. Hopefully it'll dry out and they can improve their times. But the man they're going to be chasing, or the time they're going to be chasing, is that of Tony Kanaan. And for more on Tony's story, let's go down to Scott Pruitt. I'm here with Tony. Well, most of the drivers out here are pretty upset to see the rain, but certainly not you. Not really. I think I did the rain dance last <laughs> night and it did work. So, uh, no, I'm not upset. I think, uh, obviously, I would like to get to qualifying to see if somebody could beat my time, but I feel great about this. Now, as it looks right now, you're sitting here in your street clothes, doubtful that you'll go out during a qualifying session? Yeah, if it's wet, I'm not going to go out. I think uh, it's not worth it for us. I cannot beat myself. I will only go out if somebody can beat my time from yesterday. I know it's an extra point, but uh, I think I like my race car to get 20 points <laughs> tomorrow, not only one. Well, speaking of the Pioneer car and talking about all the stuff and changes that have happened, you're on track for a little bit this morning. All the improvements they've done, the, the cement work, is it looking like it's making a better racetrack? It's better, but uh, like when they, they put the cement, it's more grip, and then all of a sudden you lose grip again, so you kind of have to readjust yourself from yesterday. But I think it was an improvement, so hopefully it's going to get dry, and then tomorrow we can put a good show for the fans. Well, great job. And remember, guys, this is his third career pole and a first for this season. Bob? And he's done a great job winning that poll, Tony Kanaan, in his adopted hometown of Miami. And he'll have a lot of supporters in the crowd here on the streets. Here's a look at our weekend coverage plans. Coming up later today, the American Le Mans Series sports cars will be on track live here on Speed Channel at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Guess what? Audi's on the front row. Then tomorrow, the champ cars take over the streets of Miami for the Grand Prix Americas. And most of the country will see it live on CBS Sports beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then tomorrow evening, switch back over to Speed Channel to catch the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup right here at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The rain appears to have let up, and we expect cars on track shortly. There's Jacques Villeneuve, former kart champion and Formula One world champion, on hand here in Miami to watch his old colleagues at work. We'll be back. Speed Channel's live coverage of the Kart FedEx Championship Series is brought to you by Bridgestone, advanced technology that gives you a grip on the future. By Syntec by Castrol, the most important thing you can do for your car. And by Toyota, get the feeling. Only a light rain right now. Engines are warming in the pit lane, and we expect cars on track shortly. But right now, let's go down and meet a former winner in a champ car on the streets of Miami, standing by with Derek Daly. Indeed, Bob, and a man who tells me he is on holiday here, Jacques Villeneuve, of course, has great memories, not just of winning the car championship, but Jacques winning on the streets here in Miami has got to be good memories for you. Yeah, 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 the, fir yeah, the first race of the season was, was here, and uh, it was fun, uh, and it started the season well, so... Jacques, you had a good run at Indy last week. Um, it's on everybody's lips. What did you personally think of the finish that was contrived with Ferrari? Well, uh, you know, they keep playing these stupid games, and, uh, and I think uh, Michael was a little bit surprised that uh, Rubens, suddenly his foot was a little bit heavier on the throttle than uh, he had expected, and uh, just pipped him for the, for the victory. Uh, so I think uh, he got, he got uh, beaten at his own game. Uh, so he's the one who looks like a total idiot, and that's a good thing. <laughs> exactly. Jacques, when you went to Formula One after the kart championship, so many followers in America followed uh, your fortunes, and then you became world champion. It's been a bit of a struggle since then. Are you surprised it's been a bit of a struggle, and does it, does it dampen your spirits, or can you still keep yourself motivated? It's been a lot harder than I expected. It took uh, too long for the car to become competitive. Actually, it's not competitive yet, so uh, it's still uh, taking a, bun a bunch of time. Uh, but finally, next year, we should have a better car. Uh, no, it, it does make it harder, but it doesn't dampen the spirit. You're still there fighting. It's just uh, very tiring. Well, there's loads of rumors, of course, of what Jacques Villeneuve may or may not do next year. Um, might you race in America? Well, right now I got uh, I got another year uh, to go on my contract in Formula One. Uh, Formula One is still the the top level of motorsport racing, uh, so it would be it would be hard, uh, difficult decision to leave Formula One. When kart race in Montreal just a couple of weeks ago, it was just an enormous reception. I mean, the Canadian fans, Jacques, just I mean, they love their motorsports. They came out in hundreds of thousands all over the kart weekend. Yeah, motorsport is uh, big in Canada, but you know, in Canada, apart from hockey, we have nothing else. We're in the States, you know, you have football, basketball, baseball, golf, you name it, there's everything. So there's, it's, it will be more difficult to get people interested in motorsport racing, I guess. But in Canada, uh, 
it's for it's been for 20 30 years uh, always very big on motorsport and the fan the fans are good because they they're just fan of racing and they'll applaud anybody wherever you come from everybody of course looked at what the difference in times f1 to champ car it was six seconds and when you don't have a tire war and you've got 400 pounds difference i thought that was actually quite good yeah there was no surprise in the, in the time in the time difference the the cars are a lot heavier uh, so there was there was no reason for for, for them to uh, to be quicker you know there, there's a lot of weight difference and all that uh, but that that's that's that still requires uh, as much skill to drive the cars are you really just on holiday Oh, definitely, yeah. I'm, le I'm leaving tomorrow for Japan. So. Okay. Thanks, Jacques. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Great to see Jacques Villeneuve here, along with a number of other, uh, other former car champions. Juan Pablo Montoya is here, Emerson Fittipaldi, and, of course, Mario Andretti at every stop on tour. Welcome, everyone. I'm Bob Varsha, along with Naturally Curly, Tommy Kendall, who is so young that his father, Chuck, actually raced here in 1983 in the Deluge. And rain very much a part of the story today, TK. Yeah, it really is. Uh, and we've only had, we've been blessed with weather this year. We had some rain in the, very, the second day in Monterey, Mexico, and it's been dry since then. So uh, when the rain comes in, these guys aren't very happy about it, with the exception of Tony Kanaan. But what that does, it takes the unpredictability and cranks it up. So those of us that aren't in the car, are doing backflips so but remember Monterey Mexico the guys didn't have it figured out how to do it early on there was very light rain Adrian Fernandez went out just to kind of more or less give the fans something to shoot for everybody else sat around with their thumbs in their butts he left with the fastest time of the day and an extra point so I uh, wonder if we'll, the guys will have learned something from Monterey and be out there because the rain and wetness is very light right now well we've got a racing surface slick as a hockey rink but we have a lot more turns let's take a look at the track map 16 turns in all DK. yeah 1.387 miles very very tight a lot going on if we didn't have the grip problems in turns three through five the rest of the circuit is actually pretty popular with the guys three four five that's where, do, where they're doing all that paving work and it's like an ice rink in the dry it's going to be diabolical in the wet the rest of it really isn't too bad it's kind of a cool circuit you got a good flow through five six or six seven and eight around the fountain there ten 11 and 12, there's good grip. 13, then you head into a pretty cool part, which is part of the original circuit back from 83. 14, 15, and 16 back onto Biscayne are the same as they were in 1983. Now let's take a look at some of the morning highlights. Mario Dominguez spun several times yesterday without hitting anything. This morning, not so lucky. On one of the fastest parts of the track, approaching turn 13, he got into the wall on the right side. Cristiano D'Amata, our points leader coming in, trying for speed everywhere, just sixth quickest in yesterday's opening round of qualifying, and look at the car control exhibited by Shorty. And this, I'll remind you, was on a fairly dry racing circuit. Sinji Nakano tried to go down the inside of Bruno Giancara, second in championship points. Giancara did not see his coming. Both drivers walked back to the garage. And when the rain started to fall, Spaniard Oriol Serbia, who probably doesn't see a lot of raindrops in his native Spain, went out to test the traction quotient. He found out it was absolutely minimal. There's the work going on on the track, trying to remove the standing puddles. It is going to be very slick and an awful lot of fun to watch. So sit back. we got 90 live minutes coming your way here on Speed Channel. We'll be right back. Go get him, Mario. Welcome back live to the streets of Miami, Florida. Don't forget, tonight and tomorrow night, Speed News brings you up to date on the world of motorsports. 7 p.m. Eastern time, John Roberts, Dave Despain, your host this weekend. 30 minutes on Saturday at 7 Eastern Sunday. We kick things off for a full hour with 30 minutes of NASCAR edition at 7, followed by Speed News Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. All the news on the world of motorsports this weekend coming your way here on Speed Channel at 7 Eastern. As you can see, the boat's out on Biscayne Bay, bringing more fans into this circuit. Let's get down to the pit lane now. Calvin Fish standing by with another celebrity guest. F1. What about the kart series? Oh, I think it's fantastic to be back to see all the, you know, all my old mechanics. You love here in Miami. Um, I believe you just bought a big condominium down the road or a floor of a condominium. How's that going? Oh, it's going to be ready like in two years. It's a you know, little penthouse. And what about the fans here? Big Brazilian base, Colombian base of fans, and uh, bringing a bunch of these guys. 
guys in from Brazil. Must be a lot of support for the race here. I think it's a big, you know, it's going to be big tomorrow because I think a lot of Latins do follow it. And every time they do a straight course and everything is fantastic. And, you know, here in Miami, it's a shame, of, you know, they just did it now because it would be a lot, you know, I would love to race here in a straight course and run downtown. All right, mate, it's great to see you back here in the States. Good luck right. for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, wait a minute, Calvin. We may be able to pull a car together for Juan Pablo Montoya. What the heck? Now, we apologize for any technical problems created. Obviously, water getting into everything this weekend, but the skies appear to be clearing. The rain has stopped. Track drying underway. Hopefully, we'll get cars on track before too long. Let's get down to Scott Pruitt. I'm down. We didn't get a chance to talk to Scott Dixon yesterday. Currently second in the target Ganassi Lola. I know you got a chance to run this morning sitting here trying to uh, hope the track gets dried off. But the biggest thing up in the air right now is getting out there trying to get that front row start. Yeah, for sure. You know, obviously yesterday I think we had a very good car. Uh, different circumstances today with the weather. Um, it's been off and on. It seems like it's just circling around uh, downtown Miami. So. You know, it's going to be hard to get a dry circuit. I don't think it will happen. And, uh, you know, the circuit uh, where it's the new black tar seal is very slippery in the wet, so I'm not sure what they're going to do about it. Now, your position, I know you got a chance to run this morning, but did you really get any fast laps before the rains came? No, we didn't get anything. Uh, you know, obviously we were a bit, ways, a bit of the ways down the pit lane, and uh, every time we started a lap, there would be a red flag. So there was a lot of, uh, you know, cautions this morning, and then obviously it rained, so nobody uh, went out after that, so we didn't get much running at all. Well, best of luck. And I remember all these guys are sitting here, hopefully, as a dry out and get a chance to go run because that front row starting is on the line. Bob? All right, thanks very much, Scott. Scott Dixon, not only second quickest in yesterday's provisional qualifying, also second quickest in this morning's abbreviated practice session, which was marred when the clouds burst. Now, normally we will get uh, a brief open practice session, 10 or 15 minutes, followed by a 10 minute break, and then the qualifying, but we are going to do away with that practice session, we are told, and we will just go on the clock officially. Each driver with 15 timed laps to find his place on the grid for Sunday's race. And that will begin at 1.35 Eastern time. It's now approximately 1.21, so we're about 14 minutes away. It'll be 40 minutes of qualifying, 35 minutes green flag guaranteed. Speed Channel's special enhanced edition of the United States Formula One Grand Prix that took place last weekend at Indianapolis Motor Speedway is coming your way Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time with exclusive coverage from the digital onboard cameras, interviews you've not heard before, and a whole lot more. You think you saw the U.S. Formula One Grand Prix at Indy? You haven't seen it until you see our Speed Vision at Speed Channel presentation. I knew I'd do that at least once this weekend. Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Folks are out on the water. Well, we've got a little water on dry land, too. We'll be back in a moment, live to Miami. Welcome back live to a very humid Miami, Florida, where we are just minutes away from the start of final qualifying for round 16 of the CART FedEx Championship Series, the inaugural Grand Prix Americas. I'm Bob Barsha, along with Tommy Kendall, Derek Daly, Scott Pruitt, and Calvin Fish are wrestling with technology in the pit lane. But we will go out and attempt to qualify in about eight minutes. Well, you see some of the blue sky overhead. Let's take a look back over the victories thus far by third in points, Dario Franchitti. At Vancouver, a very emotional win. He and teammate Paul Tracy and Tony Kanaan, all great friends of the late Greg Moore, happy to be standing on the podium in that driver's hometown. And then to Montreal for the first visit of the Champ Cars to the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, where he came through to win. First race victory in a Champ Car with his mom in attendance all the way from Scotland. And the one thing Dario Franchitti lacked throughout his Champ Car career was a victory on an oval track. And he got it at Rockingham in England three weeks ago, but it wasn't easy. A couple of pit stops put him a couple of laps down, but he managed to find his way back with hard driving and a terrific alternative pit strategy and picked up his first career oval track win in Great Britain in front of family and friends. Three very emotional kart Champ Car victories this year for the new Flying Scott, Dario Franchitti. Let's go to Calvin Fish. Well, the best place in pit lane right now, Bob, is right in front of me, one of these little air blowers, and I'm here with Alan McDonald, who's Dario's engineer. Alan, we see a lot of the guys gearing up. Uh, it's going to be very hard to improve on your lap times from yesterday, but explain the cart rule if you are fastest today. If you're fastest today, you're going to be on the front row, and uh, obviously a twisty track like this, that's very, very important. So uh, 
we're going to go for it. Should be an exciting session. Talk about the success that you've had recently. I mean, Darrow is really the hottest man on the circuit right now. You've won three of six. Could have been a lot more this year, in fact. A lot of little problems got in your way early. You've straightened things out, and the team has really gelled, even though the championship is going to be tough. Yeah, obviously, we had to learn the Lola. We had to swap to the Lola chassis, and I had to learn Dario, and we had to get used to working together. But, you know, the last few races have been great, and hopefully we can finish off the season like that. Certainly like to. Well, there's certainly another win or two in Dario's book, I think, for the rest of the year. Let's go down to Scott Pruitt with Christian Fittipaldi. Christian, you've always been very, very fast in the rain. Some problems in qualifying yesterday. And again, this morning, quickest in the session, how do things look? And how are you going to play this qualifying session? It, it's a shame because uh, our car has been pretty quick since yesterday morning. And uh, yesterday afternoon, we just had some a lot of traffic problems, a lot of red issues, like on my second set of tires. I didn't even run on my second set. So it was all down to, to luck, and unfortunately it, wasn't, it didn't go our way yesterday. Right now, I don't know, maybe if it rains it could look a little bit better for us, but I don't know if it's going to rain. It looks to be a little bit brighter over there. The track is very, very slippery in the wet. I tried it this morning for one lap, and it's unbelievably slippery. I, tur I turned the TV on last week, and there you are running a bush car. How, how was your bush adventure last week? It was an adventure. Uh, I, I did a, a huge mistake on the start. I jumped the start, and I, it was entirely my fault. They radioed me in. They said, OK, Christian, come in. You have to do a stop and go. And I was talking on the back straight. I think I just concentrated a little bit. I went into turn three. I went a little bit too high. I went on the gray, spun the car hit the wall and we couldn't fix it and, and come back. So I lasted a, a lap and a half, but it was entirely my mistake. I still have Memphis, one to go this year. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we're gonna do very well there, especially because it's, it's a smaller track and the uh, engine doesn't count as much over there. Now yesterday, had to, exactly what happened yesterday when he got, got up into the fence? Yesterday, what you're saying in the practice, yeah. I, I, I hit the inside wall. I don't know if a tow link broke and then it just steered my car. To me. It was really strange because I went on the gas and the car suddenly went to the right and, and, and I, I damaged the car a little bit, but we managed to fix it 90% for qualifying and I, I still qualified like the same car. But in qualifying, it wasn't a car issue. We had a lot more of a a track problem like with traffic and all the other stuff so with all the, the other red flags and anything else. Well, best of luck in qualifying. Now, Christian, very fast this morning and certainly one of those guys anxious to get out there and run to try and get that one point and, more importantly, that position to start in the front row. Bob? Thanks very much, Scott. Patrick Carpentier, fourth in the championship with only the slimmest hopes of overcoming Cristiano D'Amata's lead, but he looked pretty comfortable right there. Christian Fittipaldi made his Kart Champ Car debut on the streets of Miami back in 1995. He finished fifth, beating his Uncle Emmo, a two-time Kart Champion. Here's a look at the championship. It is Damata, Giancara, Franchitti, and Carpentier still alive for the championship. Christian Fittipaldi. In fact, a total of eight drivers have a solid shot at finishing second in the title chase this year. So there's a lot of hard running still to come. And it all begins with our qualifying session now just a couple of minutes away. So we'll take a quick break and be back live to the streets of Miami, Florida here on Speed Channel. Stay with us. G'day, mate. In two weeks, we will be in Australia, down under, for the next round of the Kart FedEx Championship Series in beautiful Surfers Paradise, Australia, one of the greatest street circuits in the world. Last year, Cristiano D'Amata, the first of a string of wins for Shorty. We'll see if he can go back and defend his title in the Honda Indy 300, and here are our coverage plans. First round qualifying, midnight, October 25th, live from Surfers. Then Kart Friday night, 11 p.m. Eastern time. Second round qualifying also on the 25th. Two qualifying sessions in one day, effectively in the Eastern time zone. That's at 11.30 p.m. Eastern. And then the race itself, October 26th, live here on Speed Channel, beginning at 11.30 p.m. Eastern. So get a lot of sleep and stay up late. Enjoy the champ cars down under here on Speed Channel. 
And we've just had an official update in a few moments. We'll go out for qualifying, but it's been declared a wet session, meaning everybody goes out on fully treaded rain tires with no lap limit unless they decide to declare it dry sometime later in the session. Right now, let's go to the pit lane and Derek Daly. I know we mentioned this yesterday, but the largest population of Brazilians living outside their own country is right here in Miami. And here's one of them right here, Raul Bozel. Right? One of the first ones. <laughs> what? At least one, one of the first ones, at least in the, in the racing uh, family. Yeah, I mean, you live right here in Miami. Um, you've obviously stayed active. I know you went back to Brazil for a while to do stock car racing, but is your heart still in American racing, Raul? Yes, I enjoy very much race here. I enjoy the people. Uh, you know, I spent the last uh, 15, 16 years here, so how you can uh, give you up on that? So it's, uh, it's very enjoyable, you know, the, the public, the, the racing atmosphere, whatever, whatever kind of race you do. I know the last time we were here on the street, slightly different race track. You started, uh, qualified third, finished sixth. So obviously you have good memories. I bet the itch to jump into one of these is right there, right now. Yes, I have good memories. Not only that race, but I won the race here in IMSA in 91 with uh, driving for Jag. And, uh, uh, and I drove other cars as well. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very good to see this racing back here. And uh, I hope continue for many years to come. And we all do too. Thank you, Raul. Good to see you. Calvin? Well, Derek, you talk about the Brazilians. Well, certainly the Hispanic community here in Miami, a big following here. This is one of the newspapers. You see Mario Dominguez on the left, Adrian Fernandez on the right, Michel Jourdain. But this man in the middle, he's not a driver. He's actually Ronaldo Coronado. He's one of the mechanics on Dario's team. And uh, he's actually a big star down in Colombia. And he's got a lot of articles written about him. And I'm going to break in here. Dario, I need to take that from you, mate. Sorry, you need to get on with the job here this afternoon. Maxim Magazine, no less. Dario Franchitti getting ready for quality. Qualifying. And here we see another story about one of Dario's team, not Dario himself. So this man, Rolando, he's a big star down there. And by the way, Dario, we're going to tell Ashley about you reading that magazine today. <laughs> All right, thanks very much, Calvin. Somewhere our Formula One colleague, Steve Matchett, is probably smiling to see a racing mechanic get the publicity that his position deserves. Probably has his own agent. He probably does. <laughs> Rolando being a good sport this weekend. Now, just a minute or so to go. Let's take another quick break, and we'll send the cars out for 40 minutes of live champ car qualifying at the Grand Prix America. Stay with us. Speed Channel's live coverage of the Kart FedEx Championship Series is brought to you by Prudential Financial, growing and protecting your wealth. By Hooters, delightfully tacky yet unrefined. And by FedEx, proud sponsor of the FedEx Championship Series. Welcome back to the streets of Miami, and those streets are now filling up with champ cars. There goes Dario Franchitti. The clock is now running for 40 minutes of qualifying. Once again, it's a wet session. Everybody is on treaded, wet track tires, and there is no lap limit. Across the top of the screen now. Those are yesterday's times in our dry track qualifying session. What's the over under on first car backwards? Kenny <laughs> Breck going underneath his teammate Bruno Junquera. I mean, realistically, Tommy, what do you what do you hope to accomplish other in a session like this, other than of course being the fastest guy and guaranteeing that front row spot? That's all you really hope to accomplish. I mean, I guess there's some level of preparation if we get rain tomorrow but really that's what's at stake here uh, if there was not a front row spot available or a point you wouldn't see a single car out here so um, they're really out there for that front row spot now as a driver what they're looking for is grip anywhere you can find it now this being a street circuit it's a little different than a, a permanent one permanent ones the grip is almost exactly the opposite of where it is in the dry the line gets kind of polished and so forth uh, street course that's not always true so you'll you'll look it's like Paul's slowing down Looking for a gap. Um, lines generally have no grip. Sometimes the grip reverses. You might have more grip on asphalt. In the dry, it might flip-flop and be the opposite in the rain. So what I used to do is I'd go around and I'd use my brake pedal, like on a pace lap or something, and you just jab the brakes, and you, you could feel through the steering wheel how easily you lock the brakes. And you go around and just almost like that guy on the cell phone thing. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> You're like, do I have grip? Do I have grip? And so I used to kind of search around. There we go. OK. Who had? Lap two. Dario Franchini's number. 
And so it's it's all about finding grip. And you will look anywhere. The, the preferred line in terms of you know clipping the apex, using up all the road, goes out the window. If there's a bunch more grip on the inside of an exit, you'll do whatever you have to do to tiptoe around the apex to get to that grip to stay on the gas. Who are the guys we expect might be fast as we get the red flag now? Who might be going for that provisional or that pole point? And the guaranteed front row spot, Christian Fittipaldi, Scott Dixon, Cristiano Damata, Dario Franchitti, Michael Andretti, the top five this morning. Number 27 gets pointed in the right direction, and then some. Boy, that tells you what the grip level is like out there. Let's get to Scott Pruitt. Talking about grip, following up what Tommy was saying, that's what a driver has to do. As far as a team engineer, I just got done talking with Steve Childs, engineer for Paul Tracy. I said, are you guys gonna make some changes? He said, yeah, we are going to make some changes. And I said, well, okay. I said, you guys going to stand up the camber a little bit, maybe make a spring change. He said, what we're probably going to do is just stand up, the, stand up the, the tires a little bit because we're not generating that same level of grip. The tire's not going to be rolling over quite as much. We're going to get rid of a little camber. And look at the conditions. We see some blue sky in the background. So if things dry up, we can go back on that change quite quickly and take advantage instead of doing a full wet setup. Bob? Thanks, Scott. Of course, these treaded rain tires remove an awful lot of water, so the track could dry fairly quickly. I'm looking for dry patches. Don't see any yet, although the pit lane appears to be drying fairly quickly. Frank Keedy, having brought out the red flag, will lose his fastest lap in the session. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody, to your live qualifying on Speed Channel for the Grand Prix of the Americas. Now, earlier, Martin Sake talked about the unique problems of a new racetrack. Well, see the palm trees that line the pit lane here? Well, obviously, palm trees grow coconuts. One of the things they had to do two days ago was go up and down the pit lane and slip off all the coconuts. Why? Well, when a champ car goes by here, there's such a vibration, the ground almost shakes, and what happened then is the coconuts would fall off and go bonk on my head or his head or anybody that might be standing up in that pit lane, either in here or out here. Unique problem on a street circuit in Miami. Looks like some of those palm trees are dropping styrofoam cups. But <laughs> thanks for the update, Derek. Eight palms are good. Back underway, red flag now complete. Dario Franchitti will lose his fastest lap of the session, but Dario just pitted and had a few words for the cart officials about the grip level out there. That picture right there with Kenny Brack tells you about all, all you need to know. That's down to the parking lot section. That's that as fast as he can go. Mm -hmm. In case you're wondering if he's waiting to get around, that was it. Dario that said he goes through there in idle. <laughs> now on the concrete section along the Biscayne Bay, around the Lalique Fountain. Oh. Oh. The FIA World Rally Championship is coming up tonight, Lake 2, here on Speed Channel, but it's a bit of a rally flavor to what's going on here on the streets of Miami. It is very slick out there. And you see how much more water is on that part of the circuit there. There's a canopy of trees, which, you know, kind of keeps dripping on the track. And talking about the track drying, the, the tires and the wings throw quite a bit of the water up in the air, which helps it dry. But because the, the air is so wet here, the humidity, everything just dries slower. Breck goes past Mario Dominguez, who's had an interesting day thus far. One crash on the backside. Here's Calvin Fish in the pit lane. Well, we're seeing Kenny Brack go around the racetrack right now. At the end of yesterday's qualifying session, we were trying to talk to Scott Dixon, and he was red-faced, almost purple, and stormed off. No one really knew what the situation was, but we researched it a little further this morning. He was livid at Kenny Brack. Towards the end of that qualifying session, he was on a hot lap, and he really felt that Kenny balked him unnecessarily. So he made his, his uh, thoughts known, let's put it that way, as he came down to the pit stall of Kenny Breck and uh, they didn't come to blows but even though they're there from different countries I think everyone could understand the words they were using Bob. All right thank you Calvin. As you can see stark shadows now that means the sun is out. It's the run down from turn 13 to turn 16. That's the Bayside shopping area where tonight Cart will be hosting a concert featuring a number of national recording artists. What's at stake today? A championship bonus point. A very useful point if your name is Bruno Giancaro Dixon. Overstep the bounds of traction down into turn one. Install it. Drivers are told to get their visors up. No, he's got fire. Take another look. Right in the center of the road there. And just locking up the fronts. Can't get the car stopped. 
Jimmy Vassar goes by in the yellow shell car. Over that new section where they're having so much trouble, you see him just right here where you see it tiptoeing around. Yesterday we saw that the line, usually it takes a long time for the line to get polished on a racetrack. Here there's something peculiar going on with the kind of asphalt they used here. Look at that, going five miles an hour and sliding off line. I'm not sure it would make any difference whatsoever, but I would probably start going uh, off line over in that section, run, you know, kind of the, the cushion, if you will. Uh, I, I, again, I don't think it would probably make much difference here from the looks of it, but this is the kind of time where, you, you know, you, you pretend you don't know anything and you're open to a solution, grip anywhere offline. Well, Tony Kanan has been more or less a driver's spokesman this weekend. He says, look, the, the track is a problem. We acknowledge that. This is a first-time event. We'll fix the track for next year, and that section, that parking lot section where it was paved with asphalt and then sealed, and it's causing so many problems, is scheduled to be lopped from the track map next year, and a large extension will be added at the far end along Biscayne Boulevard using the Bicentennial Park course that was a part of the original street race here in Miami. Oh, Dominguez right up against him. Scott Pruitt is out on track. I'm right there, the last turn leading onto the front straight. It sounds like these engines aren't running at all. They're just popping and farting and just sounds horrible. That's the traction control. I know, Tommy, all the years you and I have raced here, especially when it rained, we never had that luxury. No, I know. In, in this kind of situation, what you end up doing, that, that you might even do it in the uh, with traction control. You run tend to run a gear higher so you don't get uh, with a turbocharged engine. When that turbo lights, you get such a rush of torque. And so you, you start doing things like short shifting, anything you can do to minimize the wheel spin. And the traction control, like you said, it would just be on all the time. Tracy also having problems down in turn one. He gave up early there. You could see you know, the, the front tires were still spinning. <laughs> Back on his way. PT 16th in yesterday's first round qualifying. So he would desperately like to move up the charts, but not having much luck thus far. Kenny Breck, the fast man in the session thus far. We'll be right back. Welcome back live. Once again, sunny South Florida. Now here's a look at the lineup graphic we went to the break with. You see Tony Kanan and Kenny Breck. I said that Kenny Breck was the fast man in the session thus far, and that he is. That 62.165 second performance was yesterday in the dry. Breck went, uh, let me do the math, 83.029, a 123.029. And as the fastest man in this much slower session, he would be on the outside front row alongside Tony Kanan. Then we revert to yesterday's faster times. Scott Dixon takes the inside of row two next to Tora Takagi. But as I speak, and just when you got that out, Paul Tracy play. is now quickest on the day, and he is up in second. So Kenny Brack gets bumped back to his yesterday spot, which is fifth. Proving once again that no good deed goes unpunished. Oh. Breck still trying to get something out of that corner. Alex Tagliani behind him in the player's car now. now. A few months ago, Breck, end of the front straightaway, turn one. I think we're going to see a lot of that as this session goes on. And another look. Different spot this is over in five. Right. Look at that. He knows he's in trouble right there. He's just trying to back soft pedal it. And <laughs> this is comedy. Just hope I don't hit anything. <laughs> in turn five where Adrian Fernandez yesterday tried to correct the back end stepping out wound up clouding the inside wall with his left front tire a big big wreck new P2 Scott Dixon 121.844 two uh, excuse me 20.6 seconds slower than Tony Kanan's provisional pole time yesterday but that's the sort of thing we expected but under carts qualifying rules for the road courses Dixon the fast man today has a shot at the outside front row in that championship bonus point. There's Mario Dominguez. Let's get to Calvin Fish, standing by with Derek Walker. Well, one team had a great day yesterday. Walker racing Toro Takagi third in the dry. Derek, are you pleased that it's raining? The worst you'll end up is on the second row if it stays wet, or did you think you had a crack at the pole today? Well, I think it's still open for, uh, if it stayed dry, it would have still been open to us. I think we could have gone a bit quicker, but now, of course, it's uh, seeing if we can get second or better. 
you've been busy the last couple of weeks testing one of the new boys potentially for next year. How did Mario Haberfield go, the F3000 guy? Uh, he did a very good job. Uh, did, he did a good test down in Phoenix, so we'll see. Well, we hope to see you back with a couple of cars next year, Derek. Thank you. Let's go down to Scott Pro. Quick update on Adrian Fernandez sitting here quietly in the car. Talked to his team. He said, well, you know what? As we see, the conditions are getting better and better and better and better. We don't want to take a chance of going out there tearing up a race car. We're going to wait till the last possible minute, go out there and try and get our quick lap in. Guys? All right, thanks, Scott. As you were speaking about the better and better conditions, we saw a replay of Paul Tracy going around, and we watched him try to correct it, spun it back around again, and with the rear wheel spinning forward, the car kept going backwards. That reminds me a lot of actually when Scott Pruitt and I were on the ice in Denver in those in that Bridgestone Blizzak demo, and you'd be going backwards, and there was just so little grip. I mean, I don't know how many times we can say it, but... Uh... <laughs> I'm not sure I wouldn't come in and have them put a big old caster wheel out the side so I could just rim ride it all the way around the wall. There is your new fast man in the session, Michelle Jourdain Jr., 120.334. Remember, the only position that matters, given that the times are so slow, is fast man of the session. He will get that championship point, a guaranteed front row starting spot. Everybody else will have to revert to yesterday's times. This is an example of a guy who has the most to gain. Jordan comes from 15th all the way to second. If a guy goes a tenth quicker to him than him, he'll be bumped all the way back to 15th again. That's right. So, okay, back to 15th. Here we go. Scott Dixon to P1. Michelle, you're back in 15th. Now, we look at a timing and scoring screen, and it actually is kind of funny. I'm sure Michelle Jordan wouldn't appreciate the humor right now, but to watch names, as Tommy just mentioned, going from the top to the bottom and back. Now look at the dry spots opening up out there on the front straightaway. Scott Pruitt. We have a problem with Scott's mic. One of the big problems right now are opportunities is the fact that every lap this track gets quicker and quicker and quicker. So what we're going to see is just a melee of changes right now. Almost every lap goes by. These guys are going to continue to get quicker. I talked to Michelle's team. They said, yeah, it's good, but it's not going to last very long. Guys. Oh, Michelle Jourdain Jr., just as we were looking at all his props on the left side of your screen, noses it into the tires, but it doesn't look like he damaged that front wing too badly. And before that, at the conclusion of the prior lap, he's back in P2. 119.629, first man to break 120 in this session. And you see, he didn't quite, didn't quite get it turned. The tires were spinning coming off the prior corner. He kept trying to stay with it. He just didn't get it turned, and the car just kept heading. Inertia, I think it says an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Or something like that. Unless something changes its direction, there's nothing to change its direction here. So, Well, getting P2 would be so important to Jourdain. I mean, here's a guy who has completed nearly every lap of every race. In fact, he could be on track to break Rick Muir's record of missing only six laps of the entire 1979-14 race season. Jordan having by far the best streak of his career. 15 straight points finishes, sixth in the championship, and the leader in laps completed. We'll be back in just a moment. What gets you closer? Speed Channel is your home for the FIA World Rally Championship. Don't miss our nightly feature-length coverage of each day of the rally. Lake 2, Saturday stage of the New Zealand Rally, coming up this evening at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Check it out. Some of the greatest drivers in the world. Absolutely spectacular rally action. Yours here on Speed Channel. There's Michelle Jourdain, Jr. As you can see, the muck from the racetrack all over the car. Scott Pruitt, what's going on? Actually, just rolled in, had just a little bit of damage on one of the, actually the right front skirt. Standing here with team owner Bobby Rahal. Bobby, Michelle's doing a great job all season long. Looks like he's uh, really stepping on the gas out there. Well, you know, he's always been, uh, he's been really good in the rain. He's a really smooth driver in conditions like this. That's, uh, that's obviously uh, a real prerequisite. But uh, this track's just gonna get faster and faster with every second. Interesting thing, thanks Bobby, interesting thing. Let's swing the camera around here. Look at Jimmy Vassar's car. Look how dirty it is out there. It's unbelievably dirty. All the debris and all the garbage coming up off the track is unbelievable. These cars are just covered with this tar material, making it very tough on these guys. They're having to lay on a bunch of tear-offs just to be able to keep seeing what they want to see out there on the track. Calvin? 
Scott, one of the final guys to go out on wet tyres was championship leader Cristiano D'Amato. I checked in with Peter Gibbons and said, why wait? He said, we could see the blue skies rolling in. The track was just going to get better. But more importantly, when the track was really tricky, we did not want to cause a red. The final laps here today in this session will be the fastest wet or dry tyres. We didn't want to lose our fast lap. Spoke to Rocky this morning, Rocky Rokelin, his engineer, and he said, we've really been working hard on the shock setup. We've worked with springs that's really not made much effect on the race car, but we're really working to find that mechanic grip. We understand we're under a red right now with uh, Shinji Nakano in the tyres, so let's go back to Bob and TK. All right, thanks very much. At the usual scene of the crime, back there in the parking lot section. Get the last number. Now, I think that's what we're seeing on the front of Jimmy Vassar's car is that sealant, which may be petroleum-based, I'm not sure, mixing with the rainwater and getting splashed up on the cars. It looks like somebody exploded a very large oil tank. Yeah, it's definitely, and there's probably a little dirt mixed in as well, but uh, that, the brown color is something uh, that's coming off that sealer. Now, now talk, talking about the uh, the shocks versus springs, something, these shock absorbers are so, gener you know, generate so much force to damp the loads when the car is dry that they end up having a really solid shock on the car. So what ends up happening, sometimes the shaft inside the shock absorber gets what's called stiction where it actually doesn't want to budge from its one initial set point. Once you get it moving, it'll move freely, but if it never budges off there, it acts like a, it's locked solid. And that's, uh, that's, my engineer used to use that term, stiction, where the, it does, once it starts sliding, it's a lot softer, but that initial, until you break it loose, and so if, the, if it never breaks loose, the car acts like it has an infinite spring rate, and the car will just skate. Stiction. Stiction, that's what he said. Kind of sounds like Sarah Fisher after her drive sounds like Formula something, One McLaren talking about top force. Sounds like something our president would say, right? <laughs> Stiction. Yeah. Or spurns. Strategery? <laughs> Only two drivers in the field have yet to, gone out, to go out and turn a lap. One, Tony Kanaan. He's already got pole position effectively locked up. The other, Michael Andretti, currently shown 14th on the provisional grid. It's hard enough rushing through a stressful world during your waking hours. So why add to that stress in bed, tossing and turning on an uncomfortable metal spring mattress? You deserve a good night's sleep. And that's just what you'll get with the Tempur-Pedic Swedish Sleep System, the only mattress that uses the gravity-defying temper material originally developed by NASA. Instead of uncomfortable metal springs, the Tempur-Pedic mattress uses billions of viscoelastic memory cells. This soft yet supportive material automatically adjusts to every curve of your body, providing a weightless-like sleep surface that you have to feel to believe. It feels like it's actually forming its own glove to me. I can't really find an uncomfortable position. It's like nothing, I, it's like nothing I've ever felt before in a mattress. Now you can feel it for yourself. Call and we'll rush you a free sample of the revolutionary temper material along with this video and information kit. You'll learn how metal springs create pressure points that cause you to toss and turn. Tempur-Pedic reduces pressure points so you can get a better night's sleep. The Tempur-Pedic mattress is unique in that it is firm but yet it molds to your body, thus relieving those pressure points and allowing you to get a much better night's sleep. First night was amazing. The second night I woke up the next morning no back pain. And I've always had back pain. I was sold after two nights. And because Tempur-Pedic doesn't transfer motion, you'll never disturb your partner. Look how this glass of red wine doesn't tip over, even when she jumps up and down. Try that with a metal spring mattress. Don't be fooled by imitators. Only the Tempur-Pedic mattress uses the revolutionary temper material originally developed by NASA. Tempur-Pedic, changing the way the world sleeps. Call 1-800-836-2233 for your free video, information kit, and free sample of the revolutionary temper material. Call now. American Le Mans lives on speed. With only two races left, Audi looks to seal up the championship in Miami. Speed Channel presents live coverage of the Cadillac American Le Mans Challenge. Today at 4, live, exclusively on speed. Is it? Welcome back live to the streets of Miami. Crowd headed back to the grandstands now that the sun is out. Stock car racing coming your way from Talladega Super Speedway this weekend on Speed Channel. Tonight it's the ARCA Remax Series at Talladega. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And then tomorrow night at 8, John Roberts will wrap up the weekend at Talladega on NASCAR Victory Lane. Also at 8 p.m. Eastern only here on Speed Channel. 
The streets of Miami now fully bathed in bright, hot sunlight. The racing line continues to dry, and the times will continue to plummet now that we are back under green with 11 and a half minutes to go in the session. It's Patrick Carpentier, fourth in the championship. Following Bruno Junquera, second in the title chase in the red white target chip dancing racing car. Now, Kenny Brack has a pretty nice cushion. He's four tenths quicker than Christian right now. But now we're into a situation because there's 28 minutes and 49 seconds. We're getting close to the point of, uh, of well, actually, no, we got a little ways to go, probably another five or six minutes to make sure they get that 30 minutes of guaranteed green. Once that happens, then any red flag ends the session. So th th it's kind of a hot potato. They need to make sure, I mean, everybody's going as hard as they can, but you get into a situation where you might run out of time. So you got to start doing your quick laps now. Even though it's going to get quicker later on, you need to keep doing successively quicker ones in case a red comes out because the session went. Like playing musical chairs, when the music stops, you want to have that prime position to take a seat. Let's get Calvin Fish. Well, Bob, earlier Scott Pruitt talked about standing the tire up and looking to increase the footprint of the tire to the road. Typically, you run a fair bit of camp in the tires. This is an excessive, obviously. We've got a spare wheel off the Martyrs car. What the team just did is actually stand their tire back up. They still don't think there's a lot of grip in the cars. They stand up, trying to increase the footprint. Typically, you lean over so when the car goes through the corner, it rolls over, and then you get the footprint. But no cornering load. They're going to stand these up statically before the car even hits the track. Let's put that Scott Pruitt. Thanks, Calvin. A quick update on Christian Fittipaldi. Christian is the guy that's typically fastest in the rain, or certainly right at the top of the charts. He just came in, made some changes in the car, went back out. They asked him, hey, you ready to go to drives? He said, it is so slippery through that 456 complex, we aren't even going to think about putting on drives for the whole session. Guys? All right, thank you, gentlemen. We're watching Christian Fittipaldi. Currently shown in eighth place, one spot behind Kenny Breck, who was the quick. Well, Breck goes back to the top. Now the times are really beginning to tumble. Breck knocks Michael Andretti off of P2. Now Scott Dixon moves up with a 113.666. So Tony Kanan, provisional pole sitter yesterday at 61.264 seconds, is the only driver who has not gone out to grab for that other championship bonus point. But you did notice when we went to break, Tony was suited up and in his car with a new set of stickers on, dry stickers, if it got to that point. They didn't want to be caught flat-footed. We are now within 12 seconds, make it 12.4 seconds of Kanan's provisional pole time in the drive from yesterday. So the Monon Racing crew will be getting their man loaded up and ready to go. Still lots of puddles here in the parking lot area. And there is Michael. Most recent driver to take to the track. And since he was bounced from that second place position, he is back in 14th right now. It's a feast or famine day here in qualifying under the CART FedEx Championship Series road course rules. Michael with just three laps turned thus far in his Motorola Lola Honda. Cristiano D'Amato, our championship leader, remains P6, where he qualified yesterday. That one corner right there, six, where they just get that long, you know, broad slide, a little bit faster exit from that parking lot thing. I talked to Paul Tracy about the track last night. He says, turn six. He says, in the dry yesterday, he said, I felt like I was driving a 510 Datsun in the rain through there. Oh, speak of the devil. I think that might be that in turn, uh, I think that might be turn six. It's yes, visor it cam. Yeah. Paul Tracy, rear wing askew. That's exactly where he was talking about. Scott Dixon goes to P2 for the fourth time in this session. 111.546. Here's Paul arriving right rear first. Now, ordinarily, when you have a wet line like that and there's that all that dry before the tires, any other place, you'd hit that dry and it would probably almost stop that car before it, uh, before it hit the tires. But here, it doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference. It's bad and worse. Red flag. Loss of lap for Paul Tracy, but I suspect that's not his major concern right now. No. That rear wing is not askew, it is departed. Well, now we have to see, we have to wait for the monitor to update to see exactly how much of green they've had. At some point, though, it says there's 6.58 to go. That's for the full 40 minutes, but it could well be we'll get to a point where that will freeze and we'll have a guaranteed amount still to go. 
We have just over 33 minutes elapsed, but a lot of that time has been red flag. So we'll crunch the numbers while we watch Paul Tracy through his visor cam. <laughs> Wasn't even much of a hit going three miles an hour. Doesn't hurt, does it? Up goes the visor. That means come and get me. So the Simple Green Cart safety team is back at work. Looks like he took off some of the deflectors on the side pod as well. We'll take a break and return. Tony Kanan still in the Catbird seat. Scott Dixon, P2. We'll be back. Welcome back live here on Speed Channel. Bob Varsha, Tommy Kendall, Derek Daly, Scott Pruitt, and Calvin Fish with you on what has become another typically beautiful South Florida day here in Miami. We met a few of the South Florida motor racing celebrities in attendance this weekend at the Grand Prix Americas. Derek Daly is standing by with another. A battery change. Tell me. Yes, indeed. He is a Florida resident. And I know that Daryl Gwynn, who is now a top fuel dragster team owner, is also a big road racing fan because we've discussed this in the past, Daryl. Uh, actually, I've gone through the Russell School uh, out in Riverside when they were still open. Um, I'm a big fan of all motorsports. As you know, motorsports is a big fraternity, yet it's a small fraternity and we know a lot of these guys and it's only 30 minutes from my hometown in Lauderdale so we had the weekend off and um, just figured we'd come down here and check out some of our friends. And you carry the colors of the Yankees of course on your top fuel dragster. That was a very unusual sponsorship agreement when that was announced. Well it is. It has a lot of unique uh, possibilities and capabilities within our sport, with any motorsport for that matter. And. Uh, it's been real good for us, you know, having the Yankees on the side of the car when they win the World you know, World Series the last year or so, it's been a great thing. You know they're down two to one of the Angels right now. Yeah, everybody's got their eyes on uh, the Yankees, but you know what? We concentrate on our racing, they concentrate on their baseball, so uh, I'm sure they'll get it figured out. Good. Thanks, Daryl. Great to see you. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Calvin? Well, Derek, following that caution period, a big decision was here for the teams. Do they switch to slick tires? This is the left front of Michael Andretti, and typically, if you're overheating these wets, it really starts to roll up the rubber, and you lose that cutting edge, what you're looking for when you're going through the watered areas of the racetrack. So they decided to change the wets, put on a fresh set, and I think pretty much everyone has up and down pit lane. They're still looking for grip. They're not in a position yet where the racetrack has given them enough grip that the wets are ineffective. Let's go down to a quick update on the quickest guy so far, Scott Dixon, just came in very, very tempted to go to slicks. The team said, no, you only got about three and a half minutes left. There's not enough time to get out there and get him up to temp, we don't believe. So, so what are we going to do? Well, they said, well, let's just do a few little changes. They need a tire pressure adjustment, and they put in about two turns of front wing and sent him out to finish the session. Guys? And we see him now. He's out there, and he's uh, letting everybody go. He wasn't the first guy out of the pits. He mentioned that being quite a ways down the pit lane. Uh, but So he's let everybody go. He's going to try to get himself a clear part of track. Now, if there's anyone who could try slicks, it'd be Dixon. He's really in a pretty good situation. The worst he can get bumped back is the third because he was second quickest, and that time from yesterday will hold up. So the worst he can do is get bumped to third. It's second or third. The other problem with slicks, not only can you not get him up to temperature quickly enough, every time you go through that parking lot, they're going to get cooled down again a little bit. And I'm not sure you could even physically get through that area on slicks. This is the area we're talking about as we watch Cristiano Nomada, who will do no worse than sixth unless he can hoist himself up to P2. Don't forget, coming up at 4 o'clock Eastern time is watch Michael Andretti, followed by Cristiano Nomada. At 4 Eastern, the American Le Mans Series. Grand Prix Americas will run Frank Bila of Germany and Emanuele Pirro, the defending ALMS driving champion in the LMP 900 class, will start from pole position with their teammates, Ronaldo Capello and Tom Christensen alongside. On board with Patrick Carpentier, who has just gone sideways, doesn't appear to be any outward damage from the onboard camera. As he gets going once again, a little under a minute and a half to go. Crashed at the same point on the track as Paul Tracy. I think we should do a crank it up feature through that parking lot. Watch these guys full throttle cranking out about 35 horsepower limited by the track control. What do you think? No? Uh, go for it. This is fun. There was a lot of skepticism about Kart's new road course qualifying rules. But the way they have turned out, Things have become really, really interesting, even on a damp second day when the times aren't anywhere near as fast as day one. Having said that, 
new P2, Dario Franchitti. New time left. Scott Dixon's team telling him there's enough time left for two time laps. And Dixon goes back to P2 at 69.786 with another hot lap left if he chooses to take it. And he probably will, given that there are cars out on track at speed, oh, and any one of them could bump him. Dario's in traffic. You have to make the decision now. Do I try to finish this lap? Was it going to be good enough? Do I do? I wave the white flag, lag back, and have one last shot at it on my last one? Well, Frankini went to the top. Dixon was helped by the fact that Frankini lost his fast lap for bringing out the red flag. Checkers have waved. Dixon, still Dixon, still Dixon. Takagi, Brack. His timing and scoring reverts to yesterday's performances. It would appear that Scott Dixon has nailed it down. There's a couple of cars still to come through, however. Dixon can hold on to P2. It'll be the best qualifying position of his career in the champ cars. His previous best third last year at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, and Laguna Seca in Monterey, California. I know we have one more lap. Sorry, buddy. Good to check you. Still P1. P1 in the session, that, that is. The last and P1 in the session, buddy. Still P2. Good job, man. Well, I'll second that. High fives all around in the Target Ganassi Racing Pits. Scott Dixon will start alongside Tony Kanaan, who never turned a wheel in the session, when we go to the green tomorrow here in Miami. Welcome back under blue skies in Miami, Florida. Qualifying is now complete for round 16 of the Kart FedEx Championship Series, the Grand Prix Americas. Now, moments ago, after the checkered flag wave, Patrick Carpentier ran afoul of the parking lot section down in turn five, and this was the result. Hands off the wheel, big hit coming. And you can see why he releases the steering wheel rather than losing a finger. So Patrick Carpentier, fourth in the championship, will start 17th in tomorrow's 105-lap race. Let's go to Derek Daly. Thank you. Well, the hometown boy is on the pole. You can see a slew of photographers here to take a picture. Tony, uh, you live just down the street there. It's got to feel good here to be on the pole. Oh, yeah, it's right across the stands, and, uh, you know, it feels great in my hometown. And, uh, you know, as I can call hometown, I've been living here forever, and... Uh, I'm happy. I mean, I'm so excited. I think uh, we did great. My team did great. Today I haven't done, I did four laps all day, so I haven't done too much work. I told Morris I could be at the beach. Yes, you could. But you know what? Just to complete the Brazilian theme here, Emerson Fittipaldi is here to congratulate him and to give him the pole position flag as I do for every man that sits on the pole this year. So Tony Canan, congratulations. Wave the flag. Thank you, Emerson. Scott? Well, one of the guys very fast here all weekend long, second yesterday and quickest today. Yeah, now the guys and Team Target did a great job. Um, the car's been good all weekend. I think yesterday, you know, we had a couple of laps where we could have got the pole as well, but, uh, you know, it was just not our day yesterday. And, you know, today it's a pity that it rained, so we couldn't, uh, you know, quite jump Tony for his time. So, you know, obviously we start second, but, you know, all in all a good day. Very, very difficult with these changing conditions right up to the end to try and pull off that quick quick lap. I think you were on top of the charts five or six different times. How tough was it to get at the right time? Yeah, I know every time I'd come past, I'd see, you know, one. And then, you know, when I came in uh, for the pits, it was like, you know, you're in third. And I'm like, geez. So every lap, you know, everybody was going faster. And it was hard to call whether you go to slicks or not. You know, I think slicks would have been faster, but, you know, you necessarily wouldn't have made the lap. So, you know, we, we made some good calls. We ran old wets. Uh, everybody went out on stick of wits at the end, so I think that helped a lot. Hey, Scott, why yep. don't you ask him? He was There was only one guy within a second of him, and that was Christian Fittipaldi. Everybody was like 1.3 or more back. Where was he making up all the time? Where does he feel he was particularly strong? Tommy was asking, he said, you were about a second quicker than, than the second quickest guy. Where did you find all that speed? Um, I don't know. Like, obviously, uh, a lot of the time, you know, with this circuit, like, I think I had a better lap going uh, up until eight for that last lap. But uh, Shinji, we started catching Shinji really fast. Um, you know, we, we did a lot of, you know, sort of sort of small things with the wets, uh, wet setup and things. But uh, 
Obviously, I think a lot of it was going through uh, the black tar seal part. You know, there was different lines there, and, and uh, you know, you got offline a little bit there, and you're just off, way off. So, you know, it was, it was, I think, added up everywhere, pretty much. Well, terrific job. Congratulations. Looking for a great start for tomorrow. Calvin? Well, Scott, man, who's very fast in that session, Dario, you got caught out there were causing the red, but you didn't even know you were in a qualifying session. You thought it was that practice deal, right? Yeah, with the delay, I wasn't sure what was happening, and I, I considered it was just a 10-minute session. But I get Kyle had come on the radio, but I think I was talking to him at the same time. He came on the radio to tell me that, he said, but miscommunication. It wasn't so. the magazine put you off, was it? <laughs> it may have been. <laughs> but at the end of the session, you jump to the top, but then they immediately throw out your fastest time, and uh, Barry Green believes on you coming in lab, actually. You had to even quit one going but you were going to get bumped immediately so no point in staying out yeah i think we had a mid six going on the in lap and that, i mean i was held up quite considerably so the car is obviously pretty good in the wet but this uh, this this section around here is just a joke it's um I, I can't describe how slippery it is i mean we're literally on tick over yet we're still fighting to keep them out of the wall all right mate well good luck tomorrow seventh on the grid i believed dario franchiti Seventh is correct. Thank you, Calvin. We'll take a look at the starting grid for tomorrow's Grand Prix Americas. With his championship bonus point, Tony Kanaan has 66 and remains 13th in the championship. The top 10, he says, is his goal. Scott Dixon's bonus championship point today gives him 83 and moves him into a tie with Alex Tagliani for ninth in the championship with four races to go, including tomorrow's Grand Prix Americas. We'll take a break and return talk with another driver. Stand by for more live from Miami. Speed Channel's live coverage of the CART FedEx Championship Series is brought to you by Toyota. Get the feeling. By Syntec by Castrol, the most important thing you can do for your car. And by FedEx, proud sponsor of the FedEx Championship Series. We can't get away today without wishing Michael Andretti a happy 40th birthday. Unfortunately, Michael will start his first race as a 40-something from 14th spot on the grid. Here's Derek Daly. In fact, we're going to go down to Michael in just a second, but I'm going to take a chance here to talk to Patrick Carpentier. That was action-packed with a bit of damage on your behalf. Yeah, I tried. Uh, we're running in third place, and uh, we had like four minutes to go, and uh, the only uh, opportunity you have is to get first place today, so you start off in the front row. The rest of it, uh, there was no point, so we said, hey, let's try for a uh, front row, and I went on around the horseshoe, whatever they call that, and it's so slippery, but that time seemed to be pretty good, so I said, oh, man, this is really good, and I went to turn six, and it accelerated well, and I said, oh, I'll just keep accelerating. It must be good, and obviously it was not. Uh, the rear wing came off and everything. I had to do the lap after that, but it was not worth it. But it means you have lots of work to do tomorrow, but you know what? A fight on the streets is always good value. Scott? Second quickest, Christian Fittipaldi. Christian, from our position it looked bad, but from your position it had to be a lot worse. Yeah, it was a lot worse, especially from turn three all the way out of turn six. I have never experienced something like this before. Uh, you barely can't touch the, like the throttle, and it's, you're almost spinning on a straight line. It's very bad right now now for the race tomorrow we talked about passing we talk about track conditions how are you guys going to play it out for tomorrow uh, um, it's going to be tough to pass uh, obviously starting position is key here and unfortunately we don't have the best of our starting positions and we have a good car it was just a big misfortune we proved we were quick all the sessions uh, but if the guy in front of you helps you a little bit I'm not saying leaves the door open, but just doesn't turn on you. Passing is not impossible. It's difficult, but not impossible. Well, best of luck for tomorrow. Let's go down with the championship leader, Calvin Fish. Well, I'm not leading the championship, but this man is Scott Cristiano. Six on the grid. I'm sure you're looking for better, but the good news is all of the guys who can catch in the championship behind you. What about the race tomorrow? Well, yeah, that's, it's pretty important that everybody else I'm fighting with uh, is behind me, but although pretty close, that is right, by, right beside me. Uh, Bruno is right there. Uh, it's going to be a difficult race, you know, as you've seen on practice, just to stay on the track is a pretty big deal. And uh, just a little bit disappointed at the end of this qualifying. I think nobody got a lap. So. All right. All right, mate. Well, I'm sure the good news is his buddy Tony Canaan's on the pole. Let's get up to Bob and TK. All right. Thanks very much, Calvin.
Don't forget, coming up later today, the American Le Mans Series at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, live with Rick Benjamin, Bill Adam, and company. Tomorrow, the Grand Prix of the Americas will be seen through most of the country live on CBS Sports at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And tomorrow night, back on Speed Channel at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. Final thoughts, Tommy? Well, there's a weird quirk to this track that could lead to a lot of uh, mix-up tomorrow. The potential for the pits to be closed during caution open up a guy to, if you stop before that caution, the pits are closed, you could have a guy coming all the way from the back to win. Be sure to join us on CBS Sports tomorrow. For Tommy Kendall, Derek Daly, Scott Pruitt, and Calvin Fish, I'm Bob Varsha. Tony Kanaan has his third career poll. We'll see you tomorrow. So long, everyone.